The government has confiscated gold once before. Can they do it again and would they? Joining us to discuss this is E.B. Tucker, Director of Metallic Royalty and author of Why Gold, Why Now. E.B., welcome back to the show. It's been too long, my friend. Thanks for having me. Everyone's using your book title now. I see Why Gold, Why Now everywhere in other media articles and, uh, and, uh, and headlines and videos. Congratulations. Well, well that's, uh, really that's, how you know you've, that's how you know you've done something great is when people copy it. <laughs> what was it? Um, uh, imitation is the purest form of flattery. I think that was a, that's, that's an applicable right. quote. I want to talk about uh, Ray Dalio's uh, recent LinkedIn posts about possible gold confiscation. I'm just going to read his quote here. He came out with a scathing review and critique of America's current tax environment. He said, policymakers who are short of money will raise taxes and won't like these capital movements out of debt assets and into other storehold of wealth assets and other tax domains. So they could very well impose prohibitions against capital movements to other assets Example, gold, Bitcoin, etc. What's he referring to exactly? Could this happen? Oh, absolutely. It always happens. Capital controls can't move money across borders. I mean, you saw in Ukraine several years ago, they had Bitcoin ATMs. I, I, I saw them when I was there. People were putting the Grivna into the Bitcoin ATM and then going to other countries to withdraw it. They promptly stopped this. I mean, uh, look, you don't have control of a society if the money's flying out of the borders. And you can't tell where it's going to go because money always flows to a friendly place. Now, what Dalio is talking about, I feel like it's not really fair to, to, for him to put these types of uh, posts out there because it scares people and it doesn't give them proper context. In my book, uh, chapter four of, of my book, uh, we talk about the 1930s confiscation. I tell a very personal story about my great grandmother who had a cigar box full of coins and she gave them to the bank for $21, and then the government you know, revalued gold at $35. And I always said to my uh, grandfather, well, was she a sellout? I mean, I always thought she was a great person. Why did she do this? And, and my grandfather said, you need to understand that every single newspaper every single day had headlines about how the government needed the gold. FDR said that we needed the gold. We were going to be under attack. Our treasury was, was, was in jeopardy. And if you had kept this, I mean, you would have to have been like a real anarchist to do this. No one would have done this that was a member of kind of like the regular society. And so when I had that context, I said, well, look, this is kind of like watching the television every day and seeing the, the mainstream uh, narrative because we live in a narrative driven market. I mean, this is not the type of market that we grew up in. This is a narrative driven market. So the narrative is set and the narrative is reinforced. Now, why are we painting that picture for people going back? Okay, so so look at what's happening today. Where's everyone putting their money? They're putting their money into Bitcoin. It's it's all the rage. You know, you've got what a trillion and a half worth of Bitcoin in the world, and everyone says this is how we'll. And Dalio mentions Bitcoin, but people say this is how we'll protect our money from government seizure. But the chapter seventeen of my book explains how Bitcoin was created, which no one ever talks about and how the government's going to have FedCoin. The chapter's called FedCoin. It's like FedCoin will be the central bank digital currency. And all the, all the transactions that have ever occurred on the Bitcoin blockchain are part of the record. No one ever understands that. That's digital wealth storage that's held on a public blockchain. But David, this right here is not digital wealth storage, okay? This is, this is about $7,500 worth of gold right here in my hand. This is as analog as it gets. Okay. It's, 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 it's about as, as basic and uh, even a house fire can't destroy it. Uh, if someone came barging into my office with a gun, maybe they could, right? So, so when you look at what's going to be confiscated, the government's, there's no need to go after gold at this moment because nobody wants gold. I mean, if you're watching this video, I hate to tell you, but you're in the minority, which means you're early. Okay. When Bitcoin was $10, the people that were talking about it, including myself, I was writing a blog at the time. We talked about it. It was, it was very interesting. You know, we, we weren't making an investment case. We were just saying, this is, this is happening. And we were in the minority. People said, well, that's very dumb. Well, now everyone says that's brilliant. So where are you with gold? Everyone says that's dumb. So there's no need for the government to demonize gold because most people have no idea where you'd even buy it. Okay, but Evie, explain what happened in the 30s with your grandparents now. It wasn't, is confiscation the right term to use? They didn't really confiscate it per se, right? They just exchanged it with 
with with money with they gave they Correct. gave them dollars. Okay, for it. so so that's right. So everyone gets this idea that people are going to raid your house and look for your gold. It's not necessary. All you have to do is limit the ability to transact gold in the legal market, and then you have assess an excise tax. So I'm just going to give you a hypothetical. So gold takes off and it goes much higher than it is today, and everyone's panicking because uh, there's Fed coin and all your transactions are taxed, and there's no way to move money. And you have a social credit score, and if your social credit score is too low, then your FedCoin wallet won't work at the amusement park because you've been a bad boy and you've been saying things against the government. So now your your credit score is down, and you can't, you can't spend. I want you to picture this world. Okay, so yeah, the, it's already some, happening in China, by the way. That's exactly it, what's it's already going. happening. It's not a, it's not sci-fi. This is this is already happening. You Facebook, all these things are all tracked all the time. And you, your phone knows yeah. where you are all the time. It's listening to you. So if you yeah. think this is crazy, then you're crazy. Okay. So so I want you to picture this. And then you have you have this ounce of gold, which has been declared a an asset for only subversives, and it's something that you cannot absolutely cannot have. And then you you, you try to sell it. Well, how do you sell it? Because you can't sell it anymore because there's an excise tax. So they say go ahead and sell it, and it's a ninety percent tax. Okay. Well, I'll sell it on the black market. Well, that becomes very dangerous. Because remember, all they don't need to come and, and kick in your door. You just limit someone's ability to sell it. I mean, think about if you had a hundred thousand dollars in cash. You you essentially, it's very difficult to get rid of that, to spend it. Because everywhere you, if you go into to a department store and try to buy, uh, you know, thousand dollars worth of expensive clothing, they have to call over a manager and ask you where you got the cash and fill out one of those FinCEN reports. To report suspicious activity, you, you get where I'm saying. I mean, I mean, so 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 when you think about confiscation, stop thinking about a Jason Bourne movie or something. I mean, it it, it it's just a limiting the ability to transact. And so then you have to say to yourself, Am I buying the gold to transact? No, my book is the subtitle of my book, pictured right behind me. There is called the War Against Your Wealth. So your your wealth is not about trading. Your wealth is about, it's a physical representation of your hard effort and your thinking and your abilities and all the things that you've worked for. It's, it's the war against your wealth and how to win it. That's where people's heads need to be oriented right now. Help me understand something here because look, I grew up in North America, uh, but I have friends in China who are talking about the exact same thing you're, you, you just discussed. They have a social credit system. Everything's tracked. They have capital outflow controls. You're not allowed to, I think, uh, 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 withdraw more than 50,000 USD worth of money outside of the country and transfer it outside of China. Why would that happen in North America? Why would that happen to a liberal democracy? Are we in a liberal democracy or do we just read about that in the, in the social media feed I mean, as a story? I mean, this is, this is a narrative. I mean, the, the narrative is this is the land of the free. I mean, it's really the land of the free money right now. I mean, that, that's, that's what it is, right? The, if you notice in the US, the states that, that were the most cooperative with lockdowns and shut their whole economies down are the ones that are getting all the federal money. And then the states that, that tried to let businesses survive are the states that aren't getting any money. So you start, you just, if you really look at this objectively, and I want you to forget what you learned in social studies class, and I want you to actually look at, for example, if you make enough money, you, the tax situation that you have in the US, the tax code is so complicated. Believe me, I have three people working with me on taxes, and they have three different opinions about what we do. None of them can agree with each other because they say the fact is we have to make our case and we'll get into an argument with the IRS probably three years from now. And of course, we want to do the right thing, but we don't know. It's too complicated. The law is too complicated. And so people in the U.S. are dreaming. I mean, this, this system already exists. Well, why would you have a system that's so complicated that everyone's a criminal? Because criminals are easier to govern than free people. And so you have to make a system that's so complicated that everywhere you turn, you're, you've broken some kind of rule. And when you have that, it's easy to control your society. Now, I don't think the government is some evil entity. It's not the case. The nature of a government is to rule. That's the nature. That's the whole. That's how it exists. It's all around the world. It's this way. Thousands of years of history that we have recorded. It's this way. This is not new. And so. 
when you when you think that this is something that's new, forget about that. What would you do if you had that kind of control? And don't even tell me that you would be this like you know free free and easy leader because it's not true. You know, it's it, it, it's it's a it's a mountain of power, and you climb up to the top, and it looks different than when you're at the bottom. So 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 David, part of part of what I try to do on a daily basis is to stop looking around at how I wish things were. Okay. And instead look around and assess how they are and then do the things that I can do something with and the things I can't like in the system that we're in right now, gold is somewhat interesting, but gold royalties are much more interesting. So as you know, I helped put together a gold royalty company that's been quite successful. Gold's up about 50%. The company's up about a thousand percent or eleven hundred percent because we built a business to capture those royalties. And my point is, that's something we could do. Okay, we can't change the fact that the U.S. will will have six trillion dollars worth of debt financed spending, which they call stimulus, in an attempt to you know control the economy and to run it one direction and run it the other. We can't control that. Okay, forget yeah. about it. But but what we try to do is assess what is happening. I think the price of gold is going higher. I, I don't think it's going as high as some people in the business that are my friends that I respect a lot, but it doesn't need to go so much higher for the value of a gold royalty to go much, much higher. You're getting leverage to the, to the moving price of gold. Do you see how when you look at things this way, first of all, you're a lot more successful, you're a lot happier, and you can go with the flow. Okay. You asked me what I would do if I were the government. Well, I'm reading this statement from Dalio, and he shares the uh, viewpoints of many other prominent investors, which is that there's a concern from the government that capital flows are moving away from debt assets. In, in other words, government-owned treasuries. So capital yeah. is flowing away right. from where the money, what the government wants the money to go. They're going into gold. They're going into Bitcoin. Well, I'm thinking from the government, I could do one of two things. If I need this cash, I could, like you said, restrict capital movements into gold and Bitcoin, or I could create gold denominated or crypto denominated currencies and issue them like central back digital currencies. It's happening now. Isn't that just the well, next logical step? David, if, if you were the king of a country, I would move there immediately and bring all of my assets and friends with me. Okay. But, but so yes, but I don't think there's a need to make a gold backed uh, central bank digital currency because this is no purpose in that. The problem with a gold backed currency is that you can only make as much currency as you can find gold. And there's just not that much gold in the world. And, and the major countries of the world know that. That's why gold is a tier one asset and central banks have got vaults full of it. And Bitcoin is, is not that type of asset. Now, Bitcoin is a real asset. People want it. There's wealth storage. It's going to go higher. If you remember when I was on your show before, I told you to go to 25,000. I told you to go to 50,000. It's probably going to go to 100,000. Okay, so, so like this is something that's existing in the world today okay but but it's it's not like gold because in with gold you have to physically go get the actual stuff and you have to store it it's very complicated okay now to your point what's going to happen is is that fedcoin is not going to have anything backing it except for you'll be locked out of the system if you're not cooperating so if you if you it's kind of like a vaccine passport to travel around you can't get on the airplane unless you've had a vaccine if you have to have a vaccine passport on your smartphone and if you don't have a smartphone then you can go through the process of applying for a paper one and you can't go anywhere because it takes too long to get it this giant bureaucracy all right so everybody's already thinking about what that would be like and going along with it and saying well as long as we're safe so when you have fedcoin if you don't have a central bank digital wallet, or if you've been a bad citizen and you haven't, you've been criticizing the wrong candidate and supporting the other candidate, which is not the favorable candidate at the time, and and you're you're dinged, you can't use that Fedcoin to transact business, and people aren't going to uh, take your cash outside of yeah. one, five, ten dollars because because they there aren't any. I mean, hundred dollars is the largest bill now. I mean, look. I was just on a I was just on a trip to to look at some art. We were having lunch. You have lunch, okay? N no wine, nothing. Hundred dollars. I mean, it's crazy. Like a nice a nice lunch for two is a hundred dollars. It's bizarre. I mean, there's a hundred dollar bill has been the largest bill for something like fifty years now, and so wow. it's never going to be any bigger. So my point is is that is that you're already limited with cash, okay? You, Bitcoin is infinitely tracked. There was a guy last year 
who was uh, hacking people's Twitter accounts, getting paid in Bitcoin. He did it to Obama, all these people. And they found this guy. How did they find this guy? They tracked the Bitcoin payments. Okay, so your Bitcoin is anonymous. Yeah, sure. All right, let, let's see Let's see how that works out in, in the long run, right? So the digital currency is going to be the way that they go, and they don't have to back it with anything. They can back it with a narrative, and people believe it. The, the, the thing you were talking about, the uh, limiting your capital flows if you're supporting the wrong candidate, that sounds very Orwellian. Are you, is, that, is that from a movie? Is that real life, or are you just quoting a movie, E.B.? Well, I mean, it's, 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 it's not – when you start thinking about all these, the different sanctions and the swift – system and the you you know if the irs is a problem with you i'm not sure if you know this but but they now have the ability to to make your passport invalid until you sort out the problem with them so yeah. when you really start looking at the facts it's not that crazy i mean and and the reason why the swift system exists i have friends that are very into crypto and they're always lecturing me about how the swift system is so bad i said that's right but do you know why the swift system exists is because there's 13 nuclear powered carrier battle groups floating around the world that just tell you that you're going to use the SWIFT system or else you're going to have a huge problem in your front yard. Okay. So, so that's why the SWIFT system works. It's not because of the technology. And so people say, well, this coin or that coin is so much better and faster and lower fee. I, that, all that is true. And it literally doesn't matter. Okay. So, so the, yeah. the one with all the power makes the rules. I have another point to make now. Uh, Dalio talked about capitalism being inhospitable. This is what he said exactly. The United States could become perceived as a place that is inhospitable to capitalism and capitalists. Though this specific wealth tax bill is unlikely to pass this year, the chances of a sizable wealth tax bill passing over the next few years are significant. So he sees this wealth tax uh, pr proposal by uh, Elizabeth Warren as a step towards major capital outflows out of the country. Is he right? Where are you going to go? Where are you going to go? You can't have a bank account outside of the country unless you file treasury forms every year reporting all these things. You can't renounce your citizenship unless you pay an exit tax. Now they're talking the, the death tax is you know close to 50%. They're talking about raising that, lowering the amount that's exempted from that, upping the audits on estates, uh, upping the audits on people in the top uh, tax bracket range. But believe me, Believe me, there will be loopholes. And if you have enough money and you're connected in Washington and you're a billionaire, you will find a loophole because they'll create one for you. So you'll you'll be able to create some sort of, of entity that supports the sea turtles or something and hide your money in there. Believe me, this is always what happens. The, the lobbyists go to work and if you give them enough money and you find a way, you create a special exemption for yourself. But where you're in big trouble is if you're high net worth. High net worth people have it rough because you get into this zone where you don't have enough money to, to, to do anything, to get away, but you have just enough money that you've had a taste of what this is like. Ultra high net worth people, which is a certain category above high net worth, they have it a little easier because they can, they can get involved politically. We're going into a system where Dalio is, is a little bit late to this. This, what we're experiencing now is not capitalism, okay? Let me give you some examples. In my book, I call this a crisis economy. You're in a perpetual boom that has occasional crashes that last three or four weeks or a month or two months or something. They're very fast. And then they shoot straight back up with government intervention. Now, that's not capitalist. A capitalist system, what would happen is all the people that borrowed too much money to start stupid businesses would fail and other people that had been savers would come in and buy their assets in a bankruptcy proceeding. That's a capitalist system. What we're in is a crisis system. It's controlled by a central authority. For instance, when we had the problem last March and the market went down 35% in a couple of weeks and the Fed stepped in, they bought a junk bond, distressed debt, right? But not from everybody, only from certain firms. Well, why some firms and not other firms? So what I'm saying is if you're close to the center, then you have an ability to have an advantage. Mm -hmm. If you've been to any sort of centrally run economy, this all sounds very familiar. Okay. I've been yeah. to these places and know people that do business there. They say, if I lose my license, I'll lose my, my business. Well, what's your license? Well, my license is to run this factory. Yeah, but you built the factory. Yeah, it doesn't matter. They could take it away from you. Okay. So that so property rights, 
freedom of speech. I mean, these are the things that make a society free. These things are gone, okay? They're not gone a few months ago. They've been gone for a while now. I mean, I mean, you, you, people have got to stop getting themselves upset about these types of ideas and, and look at the facts, okay? Look at the facts. This is a country where you can speak freely as long as you support the narrative. Okay. But if you speak freely about something that doesn't support the narrative, you'll be canceled. Yeah, yeah, we've talked I mean, about I mean, that. Imagine, imagine this. It's like imagine this is this is not free speech. I mean, I mean, it's it's crazy when you hear people say this. The best thing about this country is it's nonsense. It's total nonsense. Okay, now I'm not complaining about that. I'm just saying, make your bets according to what's really happening not according to your social studies textbook from the fifth grade in your government school. That's yeah. the problem that people have in America. Let's, okay, let's tie this back into um, placing your bets now, and we'll wrap it up. So uh, how, to war, how to win this war against your wealth, EB? Uh, gold is down, but I mean, look, last, last quote from Dalio, he said, just, if you want to beat inflation, just go buy stuff. <laughs> is he- yeah, yeah, and what kind of stuff do you want to, I mean, so people need to understand that, that, Winning the war against your wealth is not about speculating your way, you know, into some sort of dream life. I mean, that's not typically the way it works. Wealth is built over time. I mean, it's it's the result of hard work and good decisions and focus and determination. And all of a sudden, the snowball begins to get bigger. You know, things things tend to work. So, what do you do with that money? Dalio is right. You buy stuff. Now, the thing that's nice about the gold is that you can you can take it anywhere in the world. I mean, you can get the ounce of gold, the bar of gold. You can put it somewhere. You can give it to your kid. You can sell it later. You, you know, it it's always has some sort of fungible value. So, but gold in the book, I talk about how much gold should you have. I give you my formula in the because the book is about education. You mm. can't make decisions. You can't go around on the internet looking for somebody that has some magic decision that you can make really fast over the weekend and change your life. That's called a scam artist. So what you have to do is you have to have someone that takes you by the hand and says, all right, let's understand the ground rules here. And then you're going to be in a better position to figure out what to do about it because it's not that complicated. Believe me, the only reason why you think that I'm better at it than you is because I have more experience because I was doing this a long time ago. But what you need to understand is you can do it, okay? You were smart enough to earn the money. You're smart enough to know what to do with it. So I like gold, a small amount of gold because it has analog wealth. It stores your wealth outside of the system. Mm-hmm. I don't think cryptos are totally uh, insane to buy because we're moving into this uh, digitization of the economy. Uh, I don't, I don't have favorites in that space, and I don't really care that much. But I can tell you that ten years from now, when you buy a house or or uh, get a dividend or something, that transaction will happen on a blockchain. So that's that's where we're going. How do you play that? It's very complicated. I'm going to let you talk to someone else about that. But real estate, the problem with real estate is if you're going to make 3% on your rental real estate or something or 4%, the depreciation taxes, maintenance, and other tenant headaches that come along with it are definitely not worth it. So Dalio's right, but to just go out there and buy everything is kind of a mistake. Yeah. So I like royalties. I mean, I, Nova Royalty is a copper nickel royalty company. Now, why copper nickel? Well, because copper nickel mines are massive and there's not very many of them. And so if you can wrap up uh, royalties on these things, every single electric car has got an absolute humongous amount of nickel in the car. There's 100 pounds of copper connecting everything. These are the metals that are behind the green energy movement. Okay, you can't, you cannot even come close to achieving the the U.S. goals and the world's goals for, for clean energy without a ton of copper and tons of nickel. And so Nova Royalty has gone out and acquired significant number of these royalties. And I'm highly optimistic because I don't have to get involved in mining. I just have the royalty. So as the price of these things rises, I capture 50, 60 years of nickel and copper production. And that to me is extremely attractive at a time when Wall Street's not focused on it. Now that company was born out of the founders of Metalla, which as you well know is is, the, is a similar company in the gold and silver royalty business. Now, I found these are ways that you can have, you can go with the flow. So as the flow of things uh, goes and raises the price of gold and silver and copper and nickel 
um, you don't need to worry about the cost of pulling these things out of the ground because the royalty is 1% or 2% or th whatever it is of, of production for the life of that asset. Okay, so Dalio's right, but buying yourself you know, a, a duplex uh, in a city that is rapidly turning communist and won't let you evict the tenants and is making you install all kinds of uh, safety things because you gotta keep them from hurting themselves and okay, that's not a very good hard asset because it's going to be extremely difficult for you to do anything with that because you go to sell it in a few years, nobody's going to want it. So you got to mm -hmm. sell it at a loss. All right. So you want to buy the right hard asset. And I think you can do it. I would start reading with reading the book because it's, it's, you can read it in one day. It's not very difficult. I get emails on LinkedIn from people all the time that they read the book in one sitting or two days or whatever. And the book is about helping you. I'm telling you everything that, that I use in a time like this to make decisions. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you all the things that there's no secrets. The secrets are in the book. So once you're done, you can handle this. You can do it. And, and so I think people will see how I see the world and I've been able to make decisions that have turned out quite well. And, and it's not overnight success. I mean, you, as these things evolve, you have a you have a multi year commodity cycle. I mean, we're just in the beginning of it. It's not even popular right now. Tell your friends you bought a gold royalty company. They'll say, "What is that?" They don't even know what that is. Now, five years ago, you told them you bought a crypto, and they said, "What is that?" I never heard of it. Is that a, a password for your computer? Is it some kind of math problem? They don't know what it is. So, so basically, uh, you see where you are in the cycle early stages of the commodity cycle. So if you want to get involved in that, I think it's smart. Absolutely. EB, thank you so much for your time. Great talking with you as always. I look forward to our next chat. Thanks for having me. We'll talk soon. We'll talk soon. Thank you for watching Kiko News. I'm David Lin.